Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. Listen, I'm a first-generation American from a family of immigrants, and, you know, I'll speak for myself here and say that there was a time where I thought that that meant I was a special breed of misfit, you know, that there was some inherent weirdness growing up an immigrant in the States that other countries just wouldn't understand. But of course, that isn't really true. It's just weird being an immigrant anywhere. Jumbo Lahiri's new book, Roman Stories, gets at that. She lives in Italy these days, and she told NPR's Leila Fadl that she really wanted to push back against the idea of what does it mean being you know, Italian or American or whatever, so much so that she started withholding the names of her characters entirely. Support for NPR comes from FX, presenting A Murder at the End of the World, starring Emma Corrin, Clive Owen, and Britt Marling. Emma plays Darby Hart, a sleuth and tech-savvy hacker. She joins an exclusive group invited to a retreat. When one of the guests is found dead, Darby must prove it was murder before the killer takes another life. FX is a murder at the end of the world, streaming November 14th only on Hulu. The author Jhumpa Lahiri considers Rome, Italy her home, and her latest story collection, which she first wrote in Italian and has now translated into English, captures what it's like to live there if, like her, you're seen as an outsider. It's called Roman Stories. The title is borrowed from Alberto Moravia, an Italian, great Italian writer, novelist, short story writer, public intellectual, man of many talents and an enormous reputation and legacy in Italy and in the world, he wrote uh, two volumes of what he called Racconti Romani, Roman stories. His stories explore lives lived largely on the margins during the economic boom of the 50s. Inspired by Moravia, Lahiri is presenting a new Rome. Some of these stories are reflecting uh, a changing Rome with recent uh, waves of, of immigration and recent changes in government, in policies in um, sort of ongoing debates on citizenship and who becomes Italian and for what reason, and really sort of looking at the situation of children of immigrants in Rome. So all of these things were very much at the forefront of the Rome I came to live in and to discover. And it was interesting to me, having grown up as a child of immigrants in the United States, to think about, you know, a new generation in a new place and their experiences. So many of your characters in Roman stories are originally from somewhere else, or their parents are from somewhere else, people who are made to feel other. And it's a theme that runs through your work, beginning with your Pulitzer Prize-winning debut novel, The Interpreter of Maladies. How much, even in this book, Roman stories, is drawn from your own experiences or, or searching for that in other people's? It's a continuum, as you say. I mean, I think I became a writer because I needed to um, be in dialogue with this very complex theme, if you will, of being an other or feeling uh, on the outside of something, never finding one's way into the center of things, always being questioned uh, and always questioning oneself. So I think it's both things. I mean, I always questioned who I was and where I belonged, if I belonged anywhere. The thing that struck me, too, is that your characters don't have names. I mean, some get descriptions, professor, caretaker, widow, others, letters, P, F. Why did you choose to do that? All of my Italian work has had this trait of of not having uh, specific names associated with the characters. Names are um, identifiers, as we know, and I... Uh, wrote my first novel um, very much sort of looking at this question, this fact. What do names mean? How do names mark us? How and why do we struggle with them, uh, those of us who struggle with them? And it's all connected to the question of identity, right? Because it's the, the name is the heart of identity in some sense, sort of in the everyday world. Your name is you. and And yet there can be so many nuances to this question and so much conflict associated with this or born from this label that you are given. But my Italian work, instinctively, I began withholding the name. And I think that the more I write in Italian, the more it interests me because it opens up the potential reading of who the character is. And I think that the issue is, as soon as you name a character with a so-called Italian name, then it's limiting because then the reader thinks, oh, this character is Italian. 
I'd like to push against that and ask what constitutes being Italian. I mean, really, or what constitutes being anything. So we can also flip it and say what constitutes being American. Because of my name, Jumpa, I never felt American. Okay, when I was growing up, it marked me as someone who came from, or whose family came from a very far away place. My name was not part of the language of this country and, and, and its names. And that is still the case. Um, you know, in my Italian work, um, I do feel that I'm more aligned with different approaches in literature. So, I mean, from my lifelong reading of Kafka, for example, who withholds often the name and or part of the name, you know, famously Joseph K., um, or the city of Dash, you know, so we were not given specifics. And partly that is a way, you know, writers have had also of concealing strategically identity to be able to talk about reality without pointing direct arrows. As you mentioned, Rome is at the center of every one of these stories, the new Rome, the Rome that you discovered. And I know we're speaking to you from New York, where you live part of the time, but I wonder if you think of Rome as home now as well. I think of Rome as my home, period. I think of it as my principal home. Hmm. I also have a home in New York, and I'm very fond of my home in New York. And just today I passed the hospital, you know, where I gave birth to both of my children. And I was thinking about how important, you know, the city has been in my growth as a human being. And so this city, New York City, is really part of, of me and, and who I am. Mm-hmm. But having said that, you know, if I, if I had to choose, I would choose Rome because Rome is where I feel more at home. And because for me, home is always and only a state of mind. I will always be questioned wherever I go. Those questions surround me in Rome as well, but something about Rome overrides that question. And the feeling of being part of a place, it boils down to inhabiting a neighborhood, my neighborhood, for example, and the people that who surround me there, the people I see on my walks and my day-to-day kind of excursions. Um, my friendships there are, are homes for me. Mm. Um, the language is a home for me. The Italian language is a is a home for me in which, yes, I, I travel through it with moments of, of, of discomfort, but not alienation. I don't feel alienation. Writer Jumpa Lahiri, her new book is Roman Stories. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's fall, so maybe you're figuring out your Halloween costume or where to order a pumpkin spice latte. And if you're figuring out what buzzy movies, TV shows, and music you should check out this fall, we've got you covered. Listen to the Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast from NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Bitly. From brick and mortar shops to software companies, Bitly helps businesses make more meaningful connections with customers. Create online and offline experiences that turn customers into super fans of your brand with each click and scan. Customize your short links, generate QR codes, curate your link in bio, and track performance all in one place with the Bitly Connections platform. The possibility tees for connection are endless. More at bit.ly.is slash NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Northern Trust, helping achieve your goals with a bold approach to wealth management built on advice that is grounded in research and decades of experience. Learn more at northerntrust.com slash institute. Northern Trust, for where wealth goes next.